guys, what's up? Um, I think it's 5.45, so it's time for your Monday motivational video. So as promised, I'm going to come on today and talk a little bit about macros, right? Macros is short for macronutrients, okay? And macronutrients are the nutrients that your body needs in large supply to grow and develop in a normal fashion, all right? But what exactly are your macros, right? Macros break down into four different categories, all right? Of the four, three are really the most important. The fourth one is just for pleasure, and we can talk about that later, all right? But the, most, the three most important ones that we talk about on a daily basis that we need for different reasons are, and I have them here on the board, perfect. So we have our protein, our carbohydrates, and our fats, okay? So basically, what are our proteins? I've mentioned it many, many times on calls, right? I keep telling you guys, make sure you eat your protein, make sure you eat your protein. So basically your protein are building blocks of body tissue, right? So the more protein that we take in, the more lean muscle we can build. As we build that lean muscle, we drop body fat, which is what we really wanna do. So what types of proteins are there? So proteins qualify as beef, chicken, fish, even lentils, some grains, um, what else, turkey also, um, those, are, those are your basic proteins, right? And I would say try to hit those protein goals, right? Next up, carbohydrates, carbs. We all seem to love our carbs more than we love our protein, right? What are our carbs? Our carbs are our energy. That's where we get our energy from. Carbohydrates can come from different places. We can get them from rice, potatoes, fruits, even some veggies have a higher uh, carbohydrate content, okay? So those are carbs. Next thing we have up is our fats, right? Fats can include most oils, so olive oil, avocado, um, not the healthiest type, but even like canola oil, sunflower oil, there's so many different types of oils, right? Um, but what else do we have? We have nuts, okay? So you can either do whole nuts, or butters, like nut butters, almond butter, peanut butter, okay? And avocados, which personally are my favorite, all right? Um, and fats, we use fats as our fuel source, okay? It's also storage form of energy, okay? So some people do the keto diet, all right? And that's why they're not as tired sometimes is because um, back in the old days, all right, a lot of... Um, to talk about this but this is some silly history in case you want it but um like some jewish people the jewish culture from back in the day religion um they used to eat a higher fat content diet and that's what kept them like fuller and not as um hungry and satiated was they used to eat a lot of salmon that they used to fish straight from the rivers and stuff so that's anyway that's a silly fact but anyway so those are our fats, okay? The fourth <clears throat> macronutrient, all right, that we talk about just for, it's more a pleasure aspect of it, but is um, alcohol, all right? And alcohol counts as a macronutrient, but it's not, we don't talk about it all the time because again, it's not part of what we necessarily need for normal growth and development, right? That's just more of a pleasure thing. So each one of these macronutrients, all right, has a calorie count. So your protein and your carbohydrates, so one gram of protein and carbs is gonna have four calories. When it comes to your fats, your fats are gonna have a higher calorie content, so one gram of fat is gonna equal to nine calories, and that's usually how that goes. And to elaborate a little bit more on, that, on macros, when we're talking about goals is we each have a certain amount of grams of each one of these that we need to meet every day. So whether you're using the Fit Pro app or you're using My Fitness Pal, right? If you're a little bit more familiar, you tend to use My Fitness Pal because you already know how to track your macros. So if you go into those goals, it's gonna break it down to you, break it down for you. So you're gonna have, let's say I'm gonna use myself for instance, okay? So I, my macros look like 130 grams of protein a day, 130 grams of carbs, and 
think it's about 50 grams of fat. So all together, if you add up the calories for each, right, I come to about a 1500 calorie diet. But my main goal, right, as I'm eating throughout the day and tracking my food is not necessarily, not necessarily to meet a calorie goal, right? So yes, everything I eat during the day is going to equal 1500 calories, but my main purpose is to make sure that at the end of the day, I am hitting every single macro goal. So I'm going to eat 130 grams of protein, 130 grams of carbs, and 50 grams of fat. Now, it's never going to be 100% accurate every day, right? Because things are going to vary. Um, let's say you had a little extra protein, you might go over a little bit, or you didn't have enough carbs for the day, so you'll be under a little bit, and that's okay. Like, nothing is ever going to equal out perfectly, but if you can get within at least 10 grams, at least under, um, your goal for the day, that's really, really, really good. Like you really can't get any better than that. Um, so to go a little bit further into the macro, um, conversation is, so how this came up and why I want to elaborate a little bit is <clears throat> reading labels and the nutrition facts are super important, right? Because that's where we see the breakdown of everything for every type of food that we have. Um, other than veggies, which you can Google, but the thing with veggies is they're pretty much a free, a free um, food, right? Because they're some of them have a higher protein content, which isn't bad, but the carb content is pretty low. So when you look at a nutrition label, right, the important things to focus on are your fat intake, how many carbs, and if it's something like a sweet, you know, how many grams of sugar, because that's important too. So one of uh, the other day. We were having a conversation on Facebook about um, a good, like, gluten-free uh, dessert that someone could make at home. So I came across a recipe that talked about making a little keto cake, right? So it was made with, like, some almond flour. It even was um, frosted with a low-carb frosting that I think used um, erythritol or and a few other things to make the frosting. And I my reply was, this is the macros are really good on this. And just to give you a visual on it, I compared this little this little cake, right, with frosting that was made at home to a cookie from Walmart. So just so you see how things compare. So one cookie, it was a turtle brownie cookie, okay? It had this should say carbs. It had 120 calories. It had 20 grams of carbs. 8 grams of fat, only 2 grams of protein, and 12 grams of sugar, right? So we know how big a cookie is, right? So now let's compare that to the healthy option of a little low-carb dessert cake with frosting and everything that you can make at home. So now let's compare. Calories, 132. Okay, fair enough. Carbs, only 6.2 grams. Protein, significantly higher, 5.2 fat 11.1 so it has a little bit of a higher fat content which is why the calories from the cake to the cookie are similar okay but everything else is really good the um the cake the almond cake too actually has more has 2.1 grams of fiber and since it didn't have any added processed sugar there's really no sugar content on there you know so those are the things that you can look at when you're saying, hey, maybe today I want a little bit of a treat and you can find a healthier option, you know, online or you can make it at home, right? Most of these recipes that we look for online have the nutrition info in there. And, and those are the things that you can look at. And if you decide that you even want to put it into your app to um, have it fit the macros, like do that. But looking at nutrition labels are one way to really um, get yourself familiar with macros. Um, that's how I did it for myself. I used to have a coach that would literally write out my food plan for me too. I wanted to know nothing about macros until I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I need to know for myself. I don't want someone to just say, hey, have chicken. I wanted to be able to have a variety in my diet. So that's when I said, you know what, it's time to really like figure out this macro thing. and. 
it can be as simple as you want it to be. But then when you really start learning about it, that's when the variety really comes into play. Um, so just for example, too. So we talked about fish, right, being a protein. So white fishes are pretty lean, right? When you're talking about mahi, mahi, cod, um, tilapia, which I don't recommend anyone eating, um, that has a higher protein content, a lower fat content. But now let's say we talk about a piece of salmon. Your salmon is gonna count towards your protein goals for the day. However, salmon has a higher fat content, right? So if you're going to track that piece of fish, the piece of salmon for your food, you're gonna put it into whatever food tracking app that you use, okay? And it's gonna tell you if it's a four ounce piece of salmon, it's probably about 24 grams of protein towards your protein goal for the day but it's gonna have probably a good 10 to 11 grams of fat that's going to be included towards your total fat content for the day. So, um, you know, those are the things that you learn along the way when you're starting to learn about macros. It's like, how do you play around with things? You know, if I'm having a piece of salmon, where am I gonna take away my fat for the rest of the day? So, you know, it's, it's, it's actually really good to learn about macros. Is there a question in? Courtney's asking about halibut. Halibut, I think, is a little, a little bit in the middle. I think it has a slightly high, like it's, the fat content is not as high as salmon, but it has a little bit higher fat content than, let's say, like I said, cod or mahi mahi and stuff like that. Usually, the white fishes tend to have a, a lower fat content than, um, so it's like halibut's kind of like in the middle, and then salmon has a higher fat content. There's also stuff like. Hake is a white fish, H-A-K-E. I've seen it sold frozen in um, like Stop and Shop and ShopRite, um, skate fish, stuff like that are other options. Um, so I usually stick to white fishes unless I go out somewhere and the salmon is kind of like a treat for myself. Um, but yeah, that's kind of somewhere in the middle. But um, is that it? Any more questions? That's all the questions for now. All right, guys, sorry. That's my assistant, Ed, as always. Um, so... I hope this answered most people's questions. Um, if it didn't, all right, please feel free to drop comments, all right, in this post, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks, guys.